Let's talk about networking capital and salvage value. Networking capital is money that's tied up in your project but not consumed. Common examples of networking capital usage are inventory and accounts receivable. Essentially, you have to spend some money to have some inventory sitting on your shelves, or you have to, you know, you don't get to use the money that your clients uh, haven't paid you yet. So, um, those are two uh, places where you tie up networking capital in a business. Um, and the reason that we have to account for this is the time value of money. Obviously, if you had that money, you could put it to use, um, do something else with it. We also want to consider the salvage value of any machinery or equipment we have involved in our project too. Um, salvage value can also create a tax liability if the book value of the machinery is less than uh, the salvage price that we get for it. All right, this example is going to deal with both of those uh, examples, networking capital and salvage value. CC Inc. We're going to consider putting in new equipment uh, at a cost of $600,000. We'll depreciate that equipment straight line over five years down to zero. And then the equipment is going to be scrapped and sold for $130,000. The equipment is going to save us $200,000 a year in pre-tax operating costs. And we're going to have a net working capital increase of $80,000. Our tax rate is 40% and our required rate of return, our discount rate, is 12%. What's the net present value? All right, let's walk through the numbers. Our project saves us $200,000 a year. Our depreciation costs are $120. Uh, tax effect there, one minus the 40% tax rate, gives us a net income of $48,000. Our operating cash flow, remember just uh, like we did before, we take the $48,000 plus the depreciation, remember that's not a cash flow item, and that gives us an operating cash flow of $168,000. At the end of its life, we're going to recover some money by selling off the salvaged equipment, so we're going to get $130,000. But we're going to incur a tax liability on that because we've, the book value of it is zero and so we will actually have a gain on that. So we'll take our $130,000 we'll receive from the sale of the equipment times one minus the tax rate gives us a net proceeds of $78,000 after we pay our tax bill. Let's calculate our net present value then. We have our $168,000 operating cash flow times our, or divided by our um, required rate of return. Remember it's a five year project, so we're raising to the power of five, minus our 80K in working capital, minus 600K in initial investment, plus our 78K that we got from the sale, net, net proceeds of our sale of machinery. Plus we're going to now add back our net working capital that we'll get back at the end of the five years. And again, that has to be discounted by our, by our required rate of return at five years. So that gives us 605, 602, 40, minus 80K, minus 600K, plus 89,653,44 gives us a positive net present value of 15,255.8. So this looks like a project we should definitely do. Cannibalization. Cannibalization is the loss of money borne by other parts of the firm due to the project. Sometimes projects that a firm will undertake will actually detract or have a negative impact on other products the firm sells or manufactures. This is an externality to the remaining firm and those losses need to be taken into account in the calculation of net present value. So here's our example. 
Flash Motors considers producing a new model by the name Hybrid. The plant will require an initial investment of $100 million. Let's go through a few more details of our hybrid car. It's going to produce hybrids at a variable cost of $16,000 and sell $5,000 a year at $24,000 each. The plant's going to be worthless in five years' time, depreciated straight line over five years. The hybrid will reduce sales of the IC, another model sold by Flash, by $1,500 a year. Each IC currently generates a profit of $4,000. The discount rate is 12% and our corporate tax rate is 34%. So let's do our net present value calculation for Flash Motors hybrid car. Our depreciation, $100 million divided by five years, $20 million per year. Our additional revenue, we're going to sell 5,000 new cars. Uh, the profit per car is the $24,000 in revenue minus the $16,000 in costs, minus our $1,500 ICs that we're no longer going to sell times 4,000 and that equals 34 million net new revenues. Our additional net income, we take our 34 million in additional revenues minus our 20 million in depreciation and that, and, oh, and then let's tax affect it. One minus the tax rate equals 9.24 million in additional net income. Let's calculate our cash flows now. We have our 9.24 million in additional net income. We're going to add back in our 20 million in depreciation for $29.24 million in additional operating cash flows. Do our net present value calculation, $29.24 million. Our required rate of return, 1 minus 1 over 1.125 raised to the fifth power, it's a five-year project, minus our $100 million investment gives us a positive $5.4 million net present value. We should do this project. So in looking and making decisions about whether to make an investment, take on a project, are we looking at accounting profit, profits or cash flows? We really have to consider cash flows rather than accounting profits. Cash flows are the actual monies that our project produces. Accounting profits are calculated according to rules and regulations um, with the intention of conveying information. So for a net present value calculation, you really want to concentrate on the cash flows related to that project. 